see. I am the greatest. Come back after the whole time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Tell Tape. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And on today's episode of Tell Tape, I'm going to be breaking down. That's right. The Nigerian nightmare. Nigeria stand up versus Hamza Chimaev, the wolf. Who is it, man? Who is it, man? I tell you what, guys, real quick. I thought this fight is actually better. It's more competitive than the Apollo. Uh, uh, even though, even though the Apollo fight and uh, and the Hamza fight was a little, you know, um, a little more cringy, more, a little more spectacular, but competitively, this fight is the fight. I'm going to be breaking both of these guys down like you guys wouldn't believe their strengths, their weaknesses, their opportunities, and their actual threats. So this video is brought to you by the one and only Cookie Co. Whenever you guys want natural goodies, whenever you guys have that sweet tooth, if you're pregnant, like my wife, you guys make sure to go to cookiecode.com and find a close store near you. Enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. All right, guys. So here we have it. Kumara Usman, 20 and 3 versus, that's right, Hamza Chimaev. I mean, this is the battle of the Nigerian Niger. Niger, stand up versus the undefeated Wolf. I mean, you guys check it out, dude. There's a reason why they call him a Wolf. And he's actually, if you really deep down look at Hamza Chimaev, he's a bully, man. Like he's been able to win and really just bully his way through people other than Gilbert Burns, you know, against 20 and three. I mean, there's, he's almost double the fights. He's, he's practically double the fights of what Hamza Chma actually has. And then look at, look at how diverse he is. Six and five with six KOs with five submissions. But look at the Nigerian nightmare. Yeah, I'm surprised he only has one submission. And I want to say that one submission was an arm triangle. But look at the KO, look at the KO ratio, which is crazy. Height advantage for Hamza Chimaev, but then the reach advantage for the Nigerian nightmare. And this is where this is where it could get tricky. Is the is the Nigerian nightmare at 36? He's one of us uh, old kings. Does he feel good? How great does it feel? Obviously, he's fought a lot of people, but this is why, guys, I am here to break it down. The, the former pound for pound king, Kamara Usman, his strengths, the number one strength that Kamara Usman has is his years of championship experience. This is something that Hamza hasn't felt that in a very, very long time, if ever. I don't, I don't know, I think, I don't even know if Hamza's been scheduled for five or has ever gone five. I know somebody who has. His name is the Nigerian Nightmare Kamaru Usman. You know, didn't have to go through a hard training camp or, or, or you know, his body more likely is actually fresh for this fight. You know what I mean? Kamaru Usman didn't have to go. Sometimes guys, the reason why people who take fight on short notice. You know why typically they tend to win? Is because one, they're not injured, and then two, they're just throwing out the kitchen sink and they're actually taking risk. And that's what Kamaru Usman has right now. I know he trains like a madman. I know he's crazy, but 15 pounds of him feeling good and he's already a big welterweight. I mean, him, him fighting at middleweight is absolutely crazy too. You know, he doesn't have to cut down to 170 pounds. Wrestles and obviously his takedown defense. Kamara Usman has only been taken down one time, and that was against, uh, actually, no, I take that back. He's been, he's been taken down a couple of times. I'm gonna have to give Co Kobe Covington one of those takedowns, but he's been taken down a couple of times, you know? So even though his takedown, could he be taken down? 100%. So, but the percentage of you doing that actually, you know, are, are, pretty, are pretty high for the Nigerian nightmare. And again, guys, that's one thing that he's a, Kamaru Usman is a pressure fighter. He loves to use a pressure. He loves to pepper the jab. He's a pressure fighter along with the wrestling. That's actually what makes a guy like Kamaru Usman, just that simple jab, ah, boom, there comes that right hand. You gotta watch out for it or it'll put you to sleep. And I'm sorry, Kamaru Usman, but how can I do this to everybody else and not do it for my boy? So excuse me, but you know, there, there is things. You know, he hasn't fought at 185 pounds before. You know, could this be one of the things? Could could make, could fight at 185 pounds be the difference in this fight? Hamzat has. Might not be in usual fight shape. You know what I'm saying? Like, knowing Kamara Usman is constantly training, so I don't worry about that, but, you know, a lot of this actually comes with confidence. Does he feel ready to go for a three-round fight against the Wolf? 
And the game planning, you know? Like, when is it that Kamaru Usman is able to find a game plan uh, for somebody that has the pedigree of wrestling that he does? You know what I'm saying? It's different. He has before with Kobe Covington, but prior to that, it was nobody, and then all of a sudden it was Leon Edwards, his last two fights. So these are the positions where I see that Kamara really needs to make a difference in order for him to really take his strengths and be able to win this fight against Hamza Chimaev. But without further ado, let's talk about the wolf, Hamza Chimaev. You know, his strengths, dominant wrestling. He has faith in wrestling like you guys wouldn't believe. Anybody who ever promotes or represents the sport of wrestling is super grat uh, is su the gratitude for it is like ridiculous. Be careful with those guys because they really, <laughs> those guys really understand that game of grind. And they, and they give credit to it like all the great UFC fighters who have came from wrestling, which is all of them. You know, his high motor skill. He, he has conditioning like you guys wouldn't believe. Like this guy, even though he did get tired of that fight with Gilbert Burns, like other than that, like I think he's starting to understand more of his more of his threshold, but he will go. He'll fight the first, like he'll fight the third. Switch his stance very well. He'll shoot right, he'll shoot left, he'll pop you. Like he's able to kind of cut people off, off of changing stance very well. And that's something that makes Hamza Chimaev different because mixed martial arts, other than striking, is a whole new game. And being undefeated. Being undefeated gives this man a certain a certain confidence that the, he wants to not he wants to leave better than what Khabib did. Like you know what I'm saying? Like when you talk about the greatest Russians of all time, will Hamza Chimaev always have the reign of Khabib Nurmagomedov on top of him? You know, that's what makes this guy dangerous. His legacy. He's out to chase dreams that 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 he wants to be at the Khabib status. And you know what that takes? That takes you being undefeated. But now let's talk about his weaknesses. Hamza Chimaev weaknesses. Has to adjust to new opponent and style. In this fight, guys, Paulo Costa and uh, Kamara Usman fight completely different. Two completely different styles. You know, where, where, Paulo, where Paulo would just go to the body, come up top and use a lot of power, but never had that wrestling threat. Where in difference is Kamara Usman is bringing not just the hands, but also the wrestling. You know, has fought emotional before. You know, I go back and I think of that fight with Gilbert Burns, where Gilbert, Gilbert Burns could have could have probably stopped him. It was his will that kept him up, but could fight emotional times, and that's probably where he has to be careful as well. Because Kamara Usman is a lot smarter than what people think. You know, this guy has has. It's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's six, seven, uh, you know, tile defenses. It's beating Kobe twice. It's beating the majority of people twice. Like he was literally lapping the division. Technically, he doesn't use his legs. It's it's very dominant heavy, and it's very wrestling heavy. But what happens when you get that guy that can defend those shots? What happens with those when you get those guys that want to be in those positions? You know, it changes. Could you bring? Could could you bring other tools? to it rather than just hands and wrestling. But more likely, who is it that's actually going to win? As we, as I bring up strikes landed, as I bring up this, the punch stat here, look at this, you know, strikes landed per minute, 7.30 to 4.46. Strikes absorbed per minute. In other words, it's defense. You gotta give it to the Nigerian nightmare. Take, take down accuracy. I mean, both of these things are pretty are pretty similar. You know, take down defense, pretty similar as well. And then obviously the submissions. But I think we also all know that Kamaru has more double the fights or triple the fights that a guy like Hamza Chumayev has. So that that being said, guys, I know uh, Dana White just said that the winner of this fight is more likely going to fight for that middleweight title. Like it's for sure. Like these guys, the winner of this fight is gonna have the have the ability one for Kamar Usman to become a two division champ, but then two for Hamza Chimaev to chase that dream he's always been chasing since you know he was working at the factory work in Sweden. You know, could Kamar Usman uh, that short notice fight allow him to take risk a little bit more? Could he could he catch Hamza? Could he defend him? Does he feel good at 185 pounds? Could Hamza Chimaev? press the guy who presses 
bring in the wrestling. Maybe there's a kick, there's other things involved. I mean, I, I'm a bit puzzled because I am going for my boy, the Nigerian nightmare, but I also know that it's a short notice fight as well. So, but, but at the same time, guys, you know, it's, uh, I'm going for Kamaru Usman. Number one, I'm gonna say that. You know, I'm going for him. I know this is a tough fight, but that's up to you guys to find out. You know what I'm saying? This is probably more competitive than the Alexander Volkanovsky is on Makachev because both of these guys are, have similar styles of actually fighting. Very similar pressure fighters who love to strike and who love to wrestle. I will say this about this fight. The winner of this fight is, is, is your next UFC champion. So bet the house. Bet the house, the winner of this fight is going to be, but you know what, I'm changing my mind now. I gotta go for my brother. I gotta go for the Nigerian nightmare. I gotta go for the Nigerian nightmare. I was trying to find green, but I'm like, ah. You know, I gotta go for him, the more I think about it. Because you know what, everything's at stake. This man's training for this other dude. So for that reason, guys, I gotta go with the Nigerian nightmare. So again, guys, this episode wouldn't be possible without our sponsor, that's right. Cookie Co. Whenever you guys want to indulge, whenever you guys want that cinnamon swirl, guys, stop waiting, stop hating. You guys make sure to go out to cookieco.com and find the closest store near you. Till next time, I'm Henry Suda, your host, the Triple C. I'm out!